Today I'm going to be starting the final assembly of the log. I'm going to rivet the outside rim in place and I'm going to be cutting the cover plate so it fits onto the lock as well as cutting in the keyhole. So the first thing that I need to do is to make and install the rivet that's going to attach the outside band to the guide block. To be able to reach that section of the lock, I'm once again going to be bending the outside ring out of the way. Uh, you can bend this quite a few times really as long as you don't put any sharp kinks in the metal so it should flex back and forth a few times without causing any problems at all. The rivet is just a straight bar stock that fits the drill hole that you've made. Here I'm using a nail but you can really use anything that you want. There isn't going to be any stress on this rivet, it just has to lock the free end of that outside band in place. This rivet is really in an awkward spot, so I'm using a light hammer to create a burr at one end of the rivet, and that'll be enough to just keep it lined up and in position while I'm setting the rivet home. Once I have that rivet set, I just bend that outside band back into place and drive all the rivets home and then I'm ready to fasten it to the actual back plate. Before doing the actual riveting, I trimmed the ends of the rivets so they were sticking out of the back plate about half the thickness of the back plate material so there's just enough there to form a shallow head on the back plate to hold everything together. Next I'm going to be fitting the cover plate to the lock and the reason I'm doing that next is because I need the cover plate locked into position so I can cut out the keyhole. The pins that are going to be riveting the cover plate to the lock are going to be quite a bit smaller than what I used on the back. So unlike the back plate, I'm going to be cutting the square holes into the cover plate first and then I'm going to transfer their locations onto the rivet blocks. And then I'm going to file the pins onto the rivet blocks until they fit the square holes that I've cut into the cover plate. This is kind of a tedious process and it is pretty time consuming but it's the only way that I could figure out to uh, fit the cover plate to the lock and give me a little bit of leeway as to the positioning of the cover plate in relation to the rest of the lock. Because I'm using relatively small pins in relation to the size of the actual rivet blocks, that gives me quite a bit of room to move the cover plate around and get the alignment that I want. And the main thing that I'm trying to line up is the hole that I drilled for the keyhole and I want that lining up as close as I can get it to the pivot pin that I've already riveted in place. So these are the square holes that I made and they are cut around the first drill holes that I put into the cover plate and the back plate when I made those two pieces in the very first video. And this center hole lines up perfectly with the pivot pin for the key. 
So these holes were all in perfect alignment when I started out the lock because I drilled these two plates together so everything had to line up. The problem I'm going to have now is that the rivet blocks that I've installed into the outside band have probably twisted slightly out of position. So I can't just go ahead and file a square pin in the center of that rivet block because it won't line up. Chances are that it's moved slightly in one direction or another. So what I'm going to need to do is line everything up as closely as I can get it and then transfer the locations of these square holes onto the ends of the rivet blocks and then use those marks as a guide for filing in the pins. I'm going to start with one pin, get it to fit the square hole and then I'm just going to work my way around. And the process is pretty straightforward. I just file off a little bit compare it to the cover plate, see how it's going, and then I estimate where I need to take off something else. File that, compare it to the cover plate once more, and then just keep working my way around. So here we are about 45 minutes later, and I have the cover plate locked in position. It's not riveted in place, of course, but all of the pins are set, and the cover plate will always register back into this same spot. And here I'm zoomed into the drill hole that originally lined up with the base of the pivot pin for the key. And you can see how that's just slightly out of alignment. So the next thing that I need to do before I can rough out the keyhole is realign that hole with the pivot pin. In order to do that I'm going to need a template to show me where the hole should be. And the simplest way to do that is to drill a hole into a scrap piece of metal and center it over the pivot pin. And then once you have the template centered, you scribe the inside of the line and then chisel away the material to allow you to rough out that opening. And now that I have the location marked out, I'm going to gradually expand this hole until it's centered on the pivot pin and fits the key. And now that I have the keyhole centered on the pivot pin once again, I can trace the rest of the key onto the cover plate and rough that out. Here I'm getting ready to chisel out the hole for the bit of the key. I've already roughed out quite a bit of it by just simply using a drill hole that roughly matches the end of the bit. And I'm using a narrow chisel to cut a slot between the two holes at each end of the keyhole. This narrow slot just creates an opening so that after I've chiseled into two sides of the keyhole, I'll be able to break away those pieces the same way that I do with everything else. Hopefully you can see that as I'm chiseling this piece, the metal is being pushed into that opening that I just created. So if that opening wasn't there, I'd be putting this plate under a great deal of stress. And it would buckle and maybe even create distortions that would uh, give me problems lining everything up later on. And here's what it looks like after a little bit of file work. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way of course is to like, comment and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you.
Of course, financial support is always welcome. The only product that I produce is the information contained in these free videos. So if you like the work that I'm doing and the videos that I'm putting out and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, consider becoming a patron by clicking the orange Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and we'll see you next time.